Welcome to another episode of the Spurs Fan Cave Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Garcia. I'm here with Martin M. Dominguez. Hello, hello. Spurs Phenom. Hola. And our very special guest, Thomas the Spurs Dude Vega. Hey, everybody. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off the show by acknowledging some of our sponsors. I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to Ed Luna Photography. We love you. Mark Overton Lemon III. We love you too. And the San Antonio Kings. Long live the Kings, That's baby. Right. Love you guys. Okay. Uh, we also want to go ahead and acknowledge everyone who came out to the Spurs watch party we had in Corpus Christi this past Friday at the Hard Knock Sports Lounge. Want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting us. We greatly appreciate it. Anything y'all want to say about that? Uh, we, we met a bunch of uh, people out there. We took a bunch of great pictures. Great pictures. Uh, Thank you to Alex for helping us out. She did really good taking that mic and being our MC. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to Alex. Alex was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Shane, uh, thank thank you very much for... uh, Oh, yeah. Thanks, Shane. Uh, You know, he gave out the Spurs tickets, which uh, somebody won out there. Then he gave out a gift card, which we did during the Spurs trivia. Uh, Everybody was so supportive and helpful. Uh, I look forward to hopefully Spurs fan game going back out there. During the playoffs. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start off our topic of discussion. And I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, start this off. Okay, Tom? Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. We're going to talk about how everybody right now across all sports channels, ESPN Sports uh, Center, uh, ESPN First Take, even NBA TV, TNT, for example, as well. Everyone's picking the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James as a runaway favorite for the NBA title this year. They're going to be the NBA champs. As far as everyone's concerned, they've already won. So we're going to start off with this uh, hot topic. What do you think about that, Tom? Well, I think it's a terrible, terrible and horrible mistake. Um, I think anytime you make a prediction, um, I'm not saying it's bad to say the Cavaliers are going to the finals, but to say that they're going to beat the Spurs in the finals, I don't think I don't see that happening. Um, you got to everybody has to remember um, David Blatt. This is his first year coaching in the NBA. Uh, if that were to happen, you know you got to remember Greg Popovich is one of the most experienced, if not the best coach in the league, hands down right now. Pop knows how to coach the Spurs better than Coach Blatt knows how to coach his Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, no disrespect to Coach Blatt and the Cavaliers, but Pop and the Spurs know what they're doing and sometimes um when you're going against a team like the spurs you know they're a smarter team they strategize smarter and they play smart and the, the cavaliers they haven't gone through any i guess you could say uh adversity i guess you want to call it I just don't, I think the media, of course, once again, is making that same mistake they did with LeBron and the Miami Heat a couple of years back when they predicted that they would win multiple championships, and that never happened. You know, it's just not that easy. You just don't, you know, join a team and just start winning. You know, that's not the way it works. There's a process. Um, obviously, the Cavaliers are a good team in the Eastern Conference, um, but the playoffs still haven't came. They haven't played in the playoffs yet. We can't just start giving away awards to teams that haven't proven anything. The Spurs have proven they can do damage in the playoffs and the Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals. Um, the, the only question with the Spurs was is that were they healthy enough? Obviously, that's you know a huge question mark. Um, but once they are healthy, when they're playing Spurs basketball 100% and they're moving the ball as efficiently as they have been doing the past six games, if the Spurs continue that playing, if Kawhi Leonard continues to be the defensive presence that he's been on the court, um, if you know the Spurs continue to move the ball and just play smart, and Danny Green has also has improved on the defensive end as well. So it's not just this three-point shooting, but it's also the defensive uh, efforts that he's also done during games that's really brought the Spurs, you know, these six-game wins. Um, and, you know, the Spurs were struggling at the beginning. I know they were, you know, just playing, you know, not Spurs basketball, but now it's like they've woken up. And the past six games that I've been watching them play, they look like a different team. They look like a scary team. 
that's about to come out of the West like a sleeping giant, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel bad for anybody that bets against them at this point because we all know when the Spurs put their minds to it and they want to achieve something, they achieve it. Yep. And yes, there's going to be obstacles in their way, but to say the Cavaliers are just going to straight up win a championship it is asinine. <laughs> yeah, it is. I agree with that statement because basically you can't build, you can't buy a championship. Champions are built, not brought. Um, Cleveland Cavaliers, the only one that's really been battle tested on that whole team is probably going to be uh, LeBron James. Kyrie Irving hasn't yeah. really been battle tested. Kevin Love hasn't really been battle tested. They do have some of the other veterans that they have on the, the, the team. One of the veterans that they acquired recently, wasn't it J.R. Smith from the Knicks? Yeah, but how many titles have you won? He doesn't have any titles, but he's been in the yeah, playoffs. Smith, uh -huh. He's been in the mm -hmm. playoffs. So and and J.R. Smith does have playoff experience. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, he's never gone really deep into the playoffs. I think the furthest the Knicks have ever gone was maybe the first round. They always get knocked out in the first round. Yeah. So and, I mean, and when he was a member, when he was a member with the Denver Nuggets as well, remember uh, he had to, you know, play with Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson. They couldn't get past the Spurs, so uh -huh. you know he has limited playoff experience. But everything changes in the playoffs. You know, people forget the game slows down. You know. Uh, it's more you know, you're not going to play this fast tempo, yeah. you know, like you do in the other season. You have to play a lot smarter as well. Oh. Yeah, because in the in the playoffs, what happens is that they stop, they start taking away that run and gun style of basketball. becomes a half-court uh, offense, and basically the one thing that wins the games is going to be defense, you know, and mistakes. If the other team makes too many uh, mistakes, that's going to cost you the game. You know, it's basically whoever plays a better game and makes the least amount of mistakes that wins usually comes out on top. What do you think, Martin? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, oh, yeah. it's just crazy how you know every time we're watching like ESPN or or, or Fox or well, not not so much Fox because we got Sean Elliott, you know, holding down, uh, backing up the Spurs, but. Uh, like ESPN, you know, even even on the commercial breaks, it's crazy. You know, the Spurs could do, have done some nasty dunk on the other team, and what do they do? They show the highlights on the other team. It's yeah. like no one out there gives love to the Spurs, you know. And um, I've been saying it for the last, I don't know, 60 days or so, that the Spurs are just playing smart basketball. Yes, they weren't winning games, but they were doing what they needed to do to be healthy come – the playoffs. Amen. Yeah. And just like you said, uh, Thomas, is that we have to uh, trust in Coach Pop. He knows what he's doing. He's not, you know, the one of the all-time greatest because he doesn't know what he's doing. And, and, and I do believe he was uh, reserving uh, the Spurs team to push forward and hopefully get their sixth title this season and do what the Spurs – and, you know, the Spurs are saying, oh, yeah, they have nothing to prove, you know. But, yeah, we have our five titles, but we don't have the repeat. And, and it would be uh, It'd be a travesty if we can't at least get one back-to-back -back championship. Yeah, we, we have to do one back-to-back -back before uh, Duncan retires. And then this would be the perfect time. I mean, I'm, I'm calling it out, but it's the perfect time for Duncan possibly to retire at the end of next year and have the three P. That would be insane, yeah. dude. Go out as a champ like Robinson. Oh man, a super champ. All right. So, what did you think about that, Tom? About what Martin just said? Oh, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Um, and and you know, it's funny that ESPN does this, but I think they just do it because. They don't like to admit the Spurs are great. They never have, and they probably never will. And, you know, that's the reason why uh, I don't even watch ESPN anymore. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I know about the Spurs is 
I always post things before ESPN does anyway, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not like I rely on those guys. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, ESPN will continue to make the same uh, dumb mistakes, you know, riding LeBron James' jock. I mean, that's what they're doing. They may as well just call it LeBron Center because that's all it ever is. You know, and, you know, a funny part is that, you know, you mentioned about the highlights. That's absolutely right. Whenever the Spurs have highlights, notice how they never show them. Like, I was at the Nuggets game the other night, and there was quite a bit of highlights in that game, um, you know, from Tim Duncan to Kawhi Leonard. And all ESPN showed was Tony Parker going in for a spin move layup and Kawhi Leonard shooting a fadeaway. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really consider those highlights. <laughs> I mean, really, of all the plays that happened in that game, they picked those two plays in particular. That's when you know they're hating, and it's ridiculous. Uh, the Spurs have highlights. Yeah. And I always upload you know, Spurs highlights all the time on my Facebook page, and whether it's from Kawhi Leonard, Tony Parker, or the team as a whole. And there's plenty of highlights. So I just don't understand where ESPN gets that. We don't have highlights. It's it's just weird to me. All right. Hey, man. We just uh, got a late arrival. All right. All right. Good friend. Spurs Nation is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, my son, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Thomas? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, man. He just, he just came and he showed us his brand new mask. It's killer, man. Spurring the shoes and the socks too. Yeah, it's all spurred out. What'd you say, Thomas? Don't look into the jersey too long. We're gonna get blinded by the bling. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that jersey's got more diamonds than Kanye West did. Oh, oh, oh man! Oh, man. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a fact too. <laughs> hey, man, we can see you coming a mile away, right? I Hey man, we love the mask, dude. The mask is awesome, man. Sweet. Cool, thanks. We're gonna take a picture of it and put it up here so everybody else can see it on the show. Yeah, the spray right here, uh, with white, it's still a little bit wet. It's, right. it's almost dry. We won't touch it, man, but it's awesome, dude. Awesome. Cool. Hey, thanks. join the discussion with us, dude. We're talking about basically how everybody on ESPN, uh, Sports Center, ESPN Sports Center, TNT, NBA TV, Everyone is basically saying that the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James are going to be the runaway favorites to win the NBA championship. They've all but given them the title already, but they forget that the Spurs are still the defending NBA champs. And yeah, they're the defending true. NBA champs for a reason. So what's your take on it, man? The, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're all high. You know, you think about it. When LeBron was with Miami, that's all Miami was. It was all just LeBron. And if it hadn't been for LeBron, they wouldn't even have gone to those four straight finals. You know, so and pretty much this is, it's not even the Cavs. It's just the Cleveland LeBron. That, that's all it is. You know, because like I said, if Andy, think about it. When he left, the, Cle the Cavaliers just dropped. I mean, they completely were terrible. They were terrible. Very terrible. Team. The only good thing that happened was Kyrie Irving. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that about the, the Cavs was Kyrie Irving. Yeah. You know, but um, I'm not really worried about the Cavs, man. I mean, like I said, they're having they – yeah, they have all this talent, but think about it. I mean, it's just talent. That's all they have because they, they don't really have the chemistry with the Spurs. I mean, the Spurs have they're – st they're still – they still have their big three, and they're pretty much mentoring, the, mentoring this team into a championship team. You know, and they and like I said, they're not about buying superstars. They're not that. They're not that desperate just to go out and just to buy other, you know, players who've been in All Star games just because they average more like twenty or thirty points a game. It's not about that. It's just about building a championship team. You you know, you think about it, you got Patty Mills, you got Corey Joseph, you got Kawhi Leonard who's on the rise of being uh, an All Star pretty soon. Hopefully by next season he will. I mean, you got Boris Diaw, you got Chalice Green, you got all these good players on this team, and it's not because they're all all star. It's because this team is developing into like, a, of course, a championship caliber team. But, like I said, but without any of those all stars, man, they don't need any guys like that. They don't. They don't. See, the one thing with the Spurs though is that the Spurs have been together for so many years, and usually they fly under the radar, which is what they're going to do this year. You know, yeah. but. In the end, I, I, I plan on seeing them again in the Western Conference Finals. I mean, 
it's it's to me it's it's gonna happen. I mean, yeah, every year has its story. This year, the story with the Spurs are injuries. They've been injured all year. People are getting frustrated. Fans have been extremely irate, getting mad at the team, just like I have. You know, it's like, what's wrong with you guys? You can play better than this. But they've had their struggles. But it looks like right now is they're coming together at the right time. They're gonna put together a couple of wins back here, and they probably gonna even move up. I, I think they're gonna go as high as maybe four, maybe three. You know, in the standings. Yeah. I think that's really what's going to happen. Uh, what's your take, uh, Phenom? We haven't got your take on it. My take is this. Okay, I, 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 I'm not even concerned about ESPN. But, I, you know, I welcome it. I welcome everything that they're doing because when they put us out to the side as we're nobody, that just gives us that feed, that drive to just want to do more, to prove the world that, no. You know what I mean? This is not about LeBron. It's not about, oh, this is about the Spurs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, the ring speak for itself. I mean, uh, all five uh, rings, you know, exactly. you know, exactly. you know the whole, everything, you know, and uh, I just love it that we're just blessed with such a great team. How Pop is not just a coach, but he's like a father figure to them as well. So, exactly. I mean, it, we're not even like a team, it's like we are a family. We're family, yeah, we're exactly. We're family, and, you know, and, you know, and, you know, daddy knows best, Papa knows best. <laughs> so, and, and, and as his children, yeah. Papa say, children do. Yeah. You know? yep. So, I mean. We're going to come up victorious, man. I'm not sweating thing. They're treating us like roadkill, man. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> but, it's, but it's like I said, people can say all they want to, but our rings speak for itself. True enough, man. So, I mean, what do you all think the Spurs are going to do from this season, from the rest of the season? I mean, how many wins do you think they're going to string together? They're right now, if they beat the <clears throat> Cleveland Cavaliers, that'll be, what, seven games in a row that they're going to win? Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're only like three or four games behind for uh, third and fourth seed uh, around there, let's say four games. So as long as we move up to third and fourth seed once the season's over, uh, I think that's what we've talked about all year. Yes, the sir. Spurs want to be yeah. third or fourth, you know. And, and even, even, I'm sorry, Mark, but even, no, fifth, ahead, even, even fifth would be fine. Even fifth. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, that way, you know, that'd be awesome for uh, Golden State to knock out uh, OKC or, or OKC to not got Golden, Golden State yes, in the first round in the first round, and uh, but you know like uh, the way Phenom, I love the way he says it is that you know no team out there can withstand seven games against the championship Spurs. Mm-hmm. You know they might be able to knock us out. You know for one game, yeah. you know this and that, whatever. It's about twenty points, and you know <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll win. You know this and that, whatever, but. The, the bench will get tired second, third game. And that's the thing that's ridiculous about Spurs is that our bench is so deep. Amen. And, yeah. you know, and that right. no team, we strongly believe, all Spurs nations believes that no team can withstand seven games against championship oh, Spurs. Mark, where's the yeah. wisdom, sir? <laughs> no, we're, we're stacked, too. We're stacked in the, in the point guard position. I mean, Kojo and... You know, uh, Tony Parker, they're, they're crazy, man. They're, they're crazy good. And, and, boy, coach Joe. and I like Gary Baines. He stepped up his game a lot this year. He's a punisher, and, and you know, down low, he's just going to punish everybody and just the big banger, you know? Yeah. Big body, go in there and punish everybody, get them tired. And then by the third, fourth quarter, they're going to be so tired, they can't do nothing anymore. And then, what, what do you think the Spurs are going to do, Tom? Well, everything you just said, that's what I think they're going to do, too. Um I mean, I just think that right now they're they're starting to tick right at the right time, and um, you know, and of course, you know, we saw them struggling a little before these six games, but right now they're just ticking, and the way they're moving the ball, the way they're playing defense, uh, Kawhi Leonard has also done a great job of, you know, you know, Kawhi Leonard's been playing so well on defense for the past six games. I think if he has another great defensive game tonight. He could easily win the Defensive Player of the Year award this year. Yeah. Because, yeah. and it's not so much his block shots and its steals, but it's how he changes the game. It's how he affects other guys when they're shooting the ball, how he alters their shots. Because you don't really have to block somebody or steal it from them to make a miss. There's other ways, just his presence on defense it just gets people scared. And, oh, yeah. and I think. That um, you know, Kawhi just stepped it up so so good in the past six games for the Spurs. That it, when he steps up and he plays like that, everybody 
they just feed off of that energy. Yeah. And I think that's why we're seeing the Spurs playing at that level now. Everybody's feeding off each other's energy, and they're using it into a positive energy, and then they're just able to, you know, it feels their offense. Things. It and feels I talked about it the other day. I had posted a, a Facebook status about that. Uh, I think we were playing the Bulls, and I said the game against the Bulls will not be a statement game. That that game will be about maintaining rhythm and consistency. That's what the Spurs. You know, that's the only thing they need to be worried about right now. It's just maintaining that consistency playing Spurs basketball. And if they do that, they're going to win a lot of games. They're, they might win, you know, another, like you guys said, um, most of the games that are left in the season. So I really do believe that the way they're playing right now is, you know, this is what we've expected all season long. But because of the injuries that they have to endure in the beginning of the season, uh, with Kawhi Leonard's hand injury, his eye infection, and then you had Thiago Splitter's mysterious yeah. calf injury. Nobody could figure that one out. Mysterious. And then you had uh, Tony Parker hamstring, <laughs> and then Manu Ginobili, well, he's Manu. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, um, <laughs> I think I think all of that stuff, you know, it led, and also Patty Mills coming back from that shoulder surgery with the rotator cuff, it just slowed them down. But now they're finally regaining that traction and they're like, you know, it's like, imagine you driving down a road and on a dirt road and, you know, at first, you know, the, the gravel is real loose, but once you get through that road halfway, you know, you start hitting the pavement and it's, it becomes a smoother ride. That's mm-hmm. how the Spurs season has gone so far. And they're already getting on that pavement. They're about to get on I-37. <laughs> to Corpus. <laughs> Take off. All right. our nuts. Oh, man. Yeah, true enough, man. But you know one thing, too, that uh, I want to get your take on. Uh, Skip Bayless brought this up during ESPN Sports Center about a week ago. Everyone is high right now on the Golden State Warriors because they're the number one seed in the West. And they have one of the best records in the NBA. Now, the problem that I have with the Golden State Warriors, Golden State Warriors haven't been battle-tested in the playoffs. Uh, everybody's right. expecting them to be in the finals as well. But even even Skip Bayless said it was a mistake. They're not battle-tested for one. And the thing is, when you watch how they've lost games this year, it has to do with rhythm. If you can slow the Golden State Warriors down and make them a half-court offensive team, you beat them because you take away their shot their shooters by defense. They, yep. they, they don't have that that passing game. It's they win and they beat teams because they have to have that up tempo offense. They have to have the the run and gun kind of style basketball. But when you get them to playing the true game the way it's meant to be played and that half court offense, they disappear. And when you're that's in the true. and when you're in the playoffs, you know as well as I do, that's where your games are won. But when the half court offense and by defense you know, that's why the game slows down and everything starts to, let's say all the teams don't score as many points. So yeah, I, that's true. I really think Golden State is fool's goal. I don't, everybody's buying into them, but I'm not sold on them. The one team that I, I am sold on and I think the Spurs will see in the Western Conference Finals is going to be Memphis. I think it's going to be Memphis and the Spurs in the Western Conference Finals. That's just my prediction. Uh, what do you think, Thomas? That's a really good prediction, too. Um, actually, I kind of agree with you on that one because Memphis is a team that they play, uh, I guess you could call it uh, blue-collared basketball. Yeah. They really, they're a grind-out team. And um, every year, you know, they're always in the mix. And Memphis has had a good year this year. I think a lot of people, they, they of course, they focus on Golden State because, like you said, they're, they're a very popular team. They have, you know, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry, the Splash Brothers, hitting threes left and right. Um, and so that's entertaining to watch. Of course, you know, we all like to watch fun basketball. But at the same time, when it comes to the playoffs, Memphis is more of a, you know, get, grind, dirty type player, uh, type team, where they're going to kind of, you know, get, they're going to get physical. And... You know, I can already see it. You know, Tony Allen, uh, they have, you know, he's very, he gets very physical with whoever he's guarding. Um, 
And Zach Randolph's a guy that likes to get physical. But you know what? The Spurs face the Grizzlies in the Western Conference Finals. That's where Memphis is going to lose because every time we play Memphis, I don't know if you noticed, but every time we play Aaron Baines in the lineup, he gives uh, Zach Randolph a lot of problems oh, because he's a big guy and Randolph can't just push him push him around as First easily up, as Tiago oh, yeah. Splitter. Because yeah. Splitter, he's lengthy, he's tall, but he doesn't have the size that Baines has, and Baines just takes up so much space. Yeah. He's, he's like a uh, like a giant SUV parked in your driveway. He's a linebacker. <laughs> he's a linebacker. <laughs> you know, he's trying to move that it's SUV. Tough. Compared to a, you know, a, 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 a not, you know, big, you know, splitter, you know, like I said, he's, he's lengthy, but he doesn't have this physical presence. Baines has gotten so much better this year yeah. because he's a, he's a skilled big guy. I'm not saying he's super talented, you know, but he's skilled enough to where, you know, he can throw a pump fake up and under and get an easy point underneath the basket or just, you know, pick and roll off of a, you know, a nice pass and, that leads to a dunk. He's a really he's a he's a guy that knows how to play within the painted area. I think that's where the Spurs would do damage against a team like Memphis because he would be a matchup problem. In my in my opinion, he would be a matchup problem for just Zach Randolph. And if you take Randolph away from that equation, Memphis isn't the same team, and we've yeah. seen it. Um, also, Mike Conley and Tony Parker, that matchup would be really exciting to watch because every time we play the Grizzlies, it's always a battle between Tony Parker and Mike Conley. The question is, I know Mike Conley kind of got hurt last night against the Celtics, I believe it was. He tweaked his ankle. I don't know how bad it was. I haven't heard anything on him today, but um, they got to make sure he stays healthy because Mike Conley, if he's not healthy... They cannot beat the Spurs in the playoffs. No. Um, but I really do think that the Spurs experience overall would prevail them and, you know, get them over that hump. And I could see the Spurs going back to the finals. Like I said, if they continue to play Spurs basketball the way they've been playing these past six games, they can beat anybody. Yeah. They just have to play smart. We must, stay, we must stay healthy. Yeah. You know, uh, you know uh, Mike Connolly is also one of the most underrated point guards in the NBA. He's a hell of a player. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a damn good point guard. It's kind of like Tony Parker. If the Tony Parker goes, so goes the Spurs. The same thing with Mike Connolly. If he's not mm -hmm. playing at that high level, Memphis doesn't have a shot. You know, so yeah. I understand. I get that. You know, he's their Tony Parker. You know. Yeah, he is. So, I mean, what do you guys think about this, Martin? Martin. Um. Sorry, I was off beat. I was actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I was actually. Wah, wah, wah. I was actually excited. <laughs> blooper reel, blooper reel. Oh, yeah. I was just posted on Facebook that I was excited that we're all doing the podcast together. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, do right. you think, Nation? <laughs> Sorry. 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 At least you're on the stream. At least you're on the stream. Well, you know, like I said, I do agree with that because Conley is, you know, the Tony, the Tony Parker for the Grizzlies because he's a good playmaker. I mean, he can set up, you know, he can set up so much plays for you, and he's a good floor spreader too, especially for him being a point guard. I mean, there's not much, in my opinion, there's not really much point guard that you see other than sometimes at least you see Chris Paul or you know Steph Curry, you know, at most. But and it's true what you also said too that if if Mike Conley gets it going. That he's got the whole Memphis team going. He's got yeah, them motivated. Fired. He's got them, you know, get them going into the in offensive rhythm as you know, as well as Tony Parker uh, gets it going for the Spurs, and they, you know, have the confidence to be, you know, to shoot the ball well and be more confident. Yeah, because they're feeding off of his energy just like they do with Kawhi Leonard. Exactly. Kawhi Leonard, you know, on his defensive prowess, he kind of reminds me. He has shades of the glove, Gary Payton. You know how Gary Payton in the past, yeah. when he was in his heyday, he broke players down because he would play defense just like a glove. He would stick to them. You're right. And even though he wouldn't get the steals, he wouldn't get the block shots, he was just on them like glue, and that was just suffocating. It would take play. him out of the game. That's the right. same thing that Kawhi Leonard does. And he does that against the star players of the other team, which is <laughs> going to be a great matchup to watch tonight. LeBron James versus... Kawhi Leonard. Well, just like that video yep. that, that, that Phenom shared was uh, <laughs> when LeBron was uh, shooting, uh, was it free throws or something like yeah, that? Sure. And then uh, 
And then Le Leonard came back into the game. He was like, oh, shh. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. 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 I think it was game five, right? It was, well, I remember when uh, LeBron had checked into the game and uh, I was listening to the play-by-play -play with Bo Shoney on WOAI and uh, Bo Shoney, as soon as uh, he mentioned LeBron James coming into the game, he went, he said it like this, I'll never forget it. And into the game comes LeBron, here's LeBron James entering the game and here comes Kawhi Leonard, his shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. when I heard That's that, true. that was so true. Yeah, that his was shadow. Yeah. Why did it is LeBron's shadow? Here comes a shadow. Oh yeah, you better watch out. Good yeah, because I mean that, that's going to be a great matchup to watch tonight. I mean, I just every time I see him play defense, I, I just get those shades. You know, of Gary Payton, man. Yeah, that's a good. It's a very good comparison. Without the trash talking. <laughs> Remember, guys, when we watched it uh, at another watch party, we watched the Spurs against the Cavaliers. That was a no game. Didn't we go yeah. to team? Oh, yeah. Did we go to team? Oh, man. Yeah, we did go to uh, team. We won. I think we won by like a point. Eight, 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 two, eight, two, eight, two, it was 92 to 90. Yeah, yeah, that was eight, eight, yeah, That was a nail by our big time. Bro. It was. It was. So, I mean, what do you think the score is going to be tonight? Who do you think is going to win, Tom? Of course. I think the Spurs are going to win. Um, uh, as far as the score prediction, <laughs> well, if I knew that, I'd be in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give me the over-under. <laughs> Five-point spread. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be a, a, a closer game than most people think. I, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I, I think the Spurs will be victorious, but I, I'm counting them on winning by five. I think yeah, so. it's be a close game too. I don't think it's gonna be a real out. Uh, like you know, the way that the way they've been playing the past games, um, you know, as, as long as the Spurs are playing the way they've been playing, this game will be a really good game. Uh, but the Cavaliers, they have to be ready because if they're not, the Spurs are gonna just expose them out there. But the ball movement, the ball movement, um, will probably hurt the Cavaliers a lot because. They're going to expect the Spurs to try to go one on one, and that's where they can't fall into that trap, you know, like Kawhi Leonard and everybody. Um, you can't just fall into the trap of trying to go one on one with these guys because that's what they want you to do. Yeah. You just have to keep moving the ball. And, you know, the thing with Kawhi is that when he's, you know, when, they, when the Spurs want him to score, you know, he's best effective when they move the ball and then they get it to him, and then he does like a little post up move. You know, shows the ball, pump fakes, whatever, then drives in and dumps it on somebody. I think, you know, I don't, I don't be surprised if you see a couple of dumps from Kawhi tonight. The oh, well, has really been getting to the oh, rim. Man. And um, actually, I've been uploading some highlights uh, on Facebook uh, with Kawhi that are doing that. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a couple of dunks tonight from Kawhi. Yeah. And, you know, Kawhi Leonard, you know, he might dunk in your face and everything, but he's not going to, you know, make a big deal out of it. I don't understand why so many of these NBA players today, they don't act more like Kawhi Leonard. You know, more professionalism. If you don't get, just get back on defense. That's what Leonard does. He doesn't, you know, brag and get in people's faces after he annihilates them at the rim and crushes their souls to the depths of despair. He only gets back on defense. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I'm curious to see if Pop's going to do some sort of power play where. He benches like one or two of our starters. You know how he always does like mind games with the team? It's like he'll bench somebody real good and say, okay, well, if we can beat you without this person, then imagine what we'll do in the playoffs. Or is he going to go all out and just annihilate the Cavs tonight? Yeah, you know, you know what I say too? If uh, Kawhi Leonard does dunk on LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard dunks on everybody, on anyone, I would say they got Kawhi. <laughs> <laughs> you got Kawhi. That's what I would say. When he has Kawhi. Yeah, when he has one of those breakout dunks and he just dunks it right in their face. It's like, it's like, 
kid that uh two man tomahawk oh, last oh, game. Nasty. Nasty. Well, that's what he brought it I guess I guess he calls him sugar K, but I wonder why we don't call him special K like the cereal. <laughs> <laughs> special K. You know why they call him sugar sugar K, right? Yeah, I know. Because yeah, he's sweet. <laughs> well, I gotta say it right. Sweet. Oh man. There you go. Yeah, but I, I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, one other thing too is uh, I want to tell uh, the guy that controls the AC at the AT and T Center. <laughs> oh, he can just, just pull up the tent about eighty degrees, you know, so he can get another cramp. <laughs> yeah, make sure somebody brings the mite off for him. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> and, and Oh, and security, we're gonna bottom. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, they're gonna have to carry him off the court, man. <laughs> yeah. You might have a, a a day bed out there for LeBron to lay down. <laughs> for real. Oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing though, you know. But that's just a testament to how well the Spurs play. Uh, LeBron James is he has to play at such a high level for four quarters. That at the end of that fourth quarter, his body just can't take it anymore. He starts cramping up, you know? Yeah. Even if AC is on or not, I, I expect him to start wearing down in the fourth quarter. Because he's going to have to be there and play practically the whole game in order for his team to have a shot. <laughs> yeah. You know? And uh, the funny part about that AC thing is that a lot of people don't realize, but, uh, you know, most of the guys from the Spurs, Tony Parker, Monty Ginobili, Boris Dia, and all the international guys, yeah. They were actually used to playing in non-AC environments because, remember, these guys came from uh, Europe. Yeah. And over yeah. France and over there, they don't have fancy facilities like the way the Spurs do. That's uh, Just the other day, uh, uh, I think against the Bulls game, Tony Parker had invited uh, one of his uh, teammates or somebody, one of the coaches from the, the French national team over there, and they actually took a picture of the at t Center after the game. And in French, I don't know French, but I translated it. I said that I tweeted, oh, the HMT Center, man, the Spurs have a great facility. I wish it was like this in France. <laughs> I mean, they're not, they're not used to all this fancy stuff. So, I mean, so the reason why they don't cramp is because they're used to playing in the heat. You know, over there, overseas, they don't have, you know, you know, fancy AC and, it's warm, it's probably humid, and they play in those conditions. Whereas you got LeBron over here crying just because the temperature rises. Uh, we should just start calling him uh, uh, Le Cramp. <laughs> Le Cramp. <laughs> Le Cramp. Hey, so what you're basically saying is that last year when LeBron was playing with the Heat, he couldn't take the Heat. Right. <laughs> 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 he couldn't take the heat. That's what happened to him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, but uh, before we end the show, we'd also like to go ahead and uh, give a shout out to uh, the Ben Sports Bar. We're going to be out there uh, next Friday, actually March the 20th, when the Spurs face the Boston Celtics. 7.30 tip-off. We want everyone to come out, start getting that Spurs fever going now. We don't need to wait anymore. Start it now. That way we can show the whole city... That we mean business, and not just by the, the whole city coming together, but by the whole city coming together and getting that Spurs fever going early, it's just going to make the Spurs play that much better because they're going to know that the city's behind them no matter what. 100%. Yep. So we got to start that now. Uh, anything else you'd like to say? I'm good. Anything else anybody want to say? Go Spurs, go! Go Spurs, go. Well, in tonight's game, what the Spurs are going to have to do is they're going to have to play tough, Tough defense. I mean, Kawhi is going to have to do everything he can to lock down LeBron. And because I remember last game when they, when uh, the Spurs and the, the Cavs faced off, LeBron James only scored like 15 points on a certain amount of shots. I mean, he, he took a lot of shots, but he only he had like seven, 17 attempts out of, I mean, just seven attempts out of the shots that he took. And they're going to have to keep like, you know, tough defense also on, on Kevin Love because he's already. Improving on that three point shot, especially J.R. Smith, because I remember they talked a while back that, you know, J.R. Smith had that three point shot that he couldn't get in New York. So they're going to have to do everything they can just to keep, you know, just everyone up three point line and just play tough defense, out rebound them, and just, just aggressive. You Spurs know. ball. Exactly. Spurs basketball. That's what we need. Spurs basketball. All right, that's Martin, because I was being my dad like, what, what was it? Yeah. 
Spurs ball. Spurs ball. So, all right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Until next time, go Spurs, go. Spurs, go. You don't want to say anything else? That's a wrap. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, Tom. We want to say a big shout out to Thomas Vega. We appreciate you, man. Later, oh, man. anytime, man. Anytime. I appreciate it, too. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. No problem, man. All right. And that's it. That's all the time we have for today. We'll talk to you guys later. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go.